a tremendous pleasure to be speaking with you today. Now back to the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show on AM 800. Welcome back to the show. Joyce Blackmere in studio with me today. And uh, yeah, we're about to tackle, um, well, a large issue. It's been front and center for a few years now. Affordable housing. We're all feeling it. We all have, um, you know, people that we know that have a hard, had a hard time jumping into the market, whether it's their kids buying, you know, their, their first time houses uh, mm-hmm. or, you know, someone that's older looking to maybe downsize, but they can't see it making sense because houses are, you know, they've gotten so expensive. You know, how do we fix the issue? The governments, as of late, uh, you know, particularly the federal government this past week, last couple of weeks, have really been trying to come out front and center and make all these announcements that, in my opinion, is not doing all that much, to be quite frank, to fix the issue. Uh, we need more units. That's how we fix the mm-hmm. problem, ultimately. But everyone's waited so long, and now it's taking forever, and we'll never catch up, right? So. Um, I do have, um, you know, RBC had uh, an article a little while back that talked about seven ideas that they had uh, that would help the issue. But Joyce, you have something you want to talk about too. Well, we I, that. I just wanted to uh, speak to the, to the mortgage uh, rules. Um, so the government of Canada announced uh, this past week that uh, they're loosening um, some of the mortgage rules uh, for first-time buyers and existing homeowners. And the reason I wanted to bring these up, bring this up is because any kind of incentive, whether it's big, small, whether it's going to make a big difference or not, it, it creates um, confidence in the market. That's and right. the last thing we really need is to have a huge surge of, of confidence. That's going backwards. That's, that's the opposite angle. Drives prices up even further. So, yep. But I, the reason, another reason I wanted to bring these up is because I also think that there's a lot of smoke and mirrors behind them. And I think people need to, uh, you know, give it some further thought and understand the pros and cons sure. behind them as well. So uh, the first one that I have here is that um, as of April 16th, the government will almost double the amount of first, uh, double the amount that first time home buyers can withdraw from their RSPs to put towards a down payment on a house or a condo. So that raises the limit from 35,000 to 60,000. So okay, I'm not sure how many home buyers, first time <laughs> home buyers, you know, Dan, yeah. that uh, has uh, $60,000 in an RSP. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ridiculous, but okay. Let alone, yes. you know. <laughs> okay, yeah. so. Yeah, for sure. Number one. I, I laughed at that one too when I first heard that. Great. That's fantastic. Um, as of August 1st, first-time home buyers who purchase new construction homes will also get to borrow uh, the mortgages with a 30-year term instead of the current 25 years. Um, so, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean... <sighs> It, that's only new construction. new construction. It really, I mean, so, for affordability purposes, I like this, so, but it should be for all yes. homes. So I'll if tell you, you well, I saw this headline in the papers and I said, oh, great. They're, they're changing the AMs from 25 to 30 years. Great. Wait. Then you read deeper into it. Like, no, no, it's only for new construction. Okay. I'm sorry. So first of all, this, this is catering to the Toronto market. What's happening here? They're catering to the GTA market. New condos, yep. new everything else. But for those of us this way, you know, first time buyers out this way, they're not buying brand new houses. They can't afford them for Pete's sake. No. They can't afford a million bucks for a new house. So that's, again, not, not doing much. Go ahead. Keep going. Um, and then I have uh, the government uh, will change mortgage rules to allow some people struggling to pay their monthly debts to permanently extend their repayment terms to 35 years. Um, pros and cons. I mean, great. There are people that are struggling, yes. and we get that. And nobody wants to be displaced. That's the last thing that people want or need at the moment um but you know when consider extending and re-amortizing we haven't nobody seen fine print on this uh, at this point so we're not sure what the qualifiers are for it i mean but when you start extending your amortization you're paying a heck of a lot more interest over the term so the cost of the house it's it's a lot more than it ends up being the bonus i guess the pro is that you're not you're not being put in a position where you have to sell or you have to move because you can't you don't have any other options um, so those are a few that I have um, just that I wanted to bring up and sort of make mention of. And, you know, so I don't know really, number one, um, you know, do these measures actually benefit or affect first-time home buyers? Not really. Um, existing homeowners, yes, in some ways, potentially. Um, but does it affect the supply and demand? Does yeah. it affect affordability concerns? Does it affect the fact that we don't have units to... Yeah. 
you know? So no. it's just I mean, at the end of the day, the magic. Issue, the issue is we don't have enough units. There are more people that want housing than there is available. So it's driving up prices. And this is the issue that we continue to see that we've seen over the last few years. It's only going to get worse. Right. And so, you know, a lot of great texts coming in. I want to get to these as well from our listeners. Uh, you know, how would you fix the housing affordability issues? The text says 10 800. Uh, we're going to share them uh, with you here. Uh, RBC uh, had a few different ideas, which I, you know, some, some great ones. So aggressively expand the construction sector's labor pool by prioritizing immigrant skills, recognizing credentials from other jurisdictions, and setting ambitious targets for trade and enrollments. Ultimately, we need more housing. We mm-hmm. need to build more housing. We need trades to do that. There's not enough trades in the marketplace to, to build all this housing that we need. So, yes target immigration into those trades that are required for, you know, those, the, the professional, um, professionals that we need for mm-hmm. whatever, you know, whether it's medical or, uh, construction or whatever it is. So that's a great one. Um, develop and adopt innovative design, building techniques and technology to boost productivity through prefabricated housing. So yep. again, that's a great solution, right? So how can we put houses up faster? Prefab. Sure. Slap them up, put them up. Right? Larger buildings. So larger buildings, this is my idea, it's not RBC's, but building larger buildings as opposed to, you know, uh, one one house at a time, put a, uh, a building up with 150 units. Right? Yep, for so, sure. For sure. Um, we just got a message from a listener saying that you sound like you're far away. So Hello. Hello. <laughs> Um, well, I don't have the article, Hello. but they've also, they've also How made some, um, um, announcements recently too about immigration and limiting the num- the amount of immigration, reducing the amount of immigration. Yes. And, and on one hand, yes, we need to have housing to put people in, but on the other hand, bringing new, um, newcomers into Canada is bringing in the people that we need and that have the skills 100%. to add to the housing deficit that we're currently experiencing. A hundred percent. No doubt. No doubt about that. So, um, okay. So let's get to some of these texts because, uh, we have a couple minutes here. Uh, so a listener says, I think the best way to help with this housing problem is to build long-term housing for the old people. And that would free up homes for people to buy. Sure. So again, yeah, not enough long-term housing driven, issue. driven for sure. That's yep. right. Yep. A great idea there. Someone else said, I think we, uh, if we allowed more tiny homes, small homes, the bylaws need to change to be able to put these on properties wherever we would like, and it would be a lot more affordable for people's uh, entering into the market, young families, young people who don't have families that just want uh, to live on their own uh, on a small piece of property. Yes, yep. sure, great. And speaking like speaking of making it affordable, yeah. and you know, we have all this cut the red tape yes. stuff going on. Yes, I don't know well, the word you want to use. I'm choosing my words. Um, <laughs> stuff uh but they need to make it more affordable to be able to do that the, uh, the permitting the development charges all that stuff yeah. right 100 percent uh someone else says high-rise apartment buildings only 10 floors or more with tax incentives for the builders so a hundred percent the the quickest way to add more units to the marketplace is doing is making buildings more buildings just like they have been in the gta forever right yeah. high-rise buildings high-rise yeah. buildings high-rise buildings everywhere you go it's high-rise buildings right so that's the quickest way to get buildings i look at the ones we have on uh, front road or on sandwich in uh, yes. in amherstburg yeah. uh those two buildings popped up in you know i'm going to say a year and a half ish give or take uh, and you know, people are already living in the first building. The second building is almost done. How many units are in I, each? I w- don't quote me, but I believe it's about 120 ish. So imagine having those. Yeah. hundred percent. Everywhere. Quickly, right. Yeah. You can't build 120 houses no, in a year. No. Right. So, uh, and I believe that's each building, but don't quote me. I, I could be wrong. Um, someone else says, uh, cut immigration. It's been proven to increase home prices and slow wage growth. Okay. But. How do we fix then the issue uh, if we completely cut off immigration of uh, labor, right? So we we cut off immigration. Well, then there's no one to work the jobs that we need worked. <laughs> so maybe it's being more selective with the immigration that we bring I, I in. I think maybe? they're working towards that a little bit. Yeah. But our GDP. So basically, we're not making enough babies here in the country, right? Essentially, is what the economists will say. So we need immigration to keep our 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 country growing. And our GDP growing. So I, we, I watched something this past week that says that we're we're dying faster than we're procreating. 100%. So we we need to bring in immigration. Some some. That's uh, right. Yep. Yeah. Someone says, "I love this one." Little house compounds with a common area uh, 
for maybe laundry, restaurant, food store, or confectionery, you know, stuff like that. I think it's a wonderful idea and maybe also one for the homeless. So again, just small developments, right? Small, tiny home developments Mm -hmm. that, again, it's there. I love the idea. I think it's a cool idea. Purpose-built communities. Purpose-built, that's right. Communities, Mm -hmm. 100%. Just like, you know, like the uh, mobile home parks used to be back in the day. Same idea. It's no different than like a subdivision. Sure. Smaller, smaller version. Yeah, exactly. Um, Someone says, well, I can tell you what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't publicly say something absurd like, let's count dorm rooms in our numbers for housing. So I'm not sure who would have made that. Maybe one of the governments, one of the... But yeah, to me, counting dorm rooms as a unit is absurd. Yeah, that's ridiculous. If that's ridiculous. in fact what they're doing. Yeah. Um, someone says 30-year mortgages have been around for decades in the U.S. We're slow to adapt. I don't know if that would that would change our situation here. Uh, it would have helped, obviously, from an affordability standpoint for those already owning a home, but it wouldn't help people getting into housing. Um, I don't think in today, today's world, because our, our mortgage rates are now higher. So being able to lock in now for 30 years wouldn't, wouldn't have changed our, our lack of units. Yeah, but it would, it would, it would, it would, it would make things be, more affordable, make it more affordable to had, get, had they locked to in the last in. couple of years. Yeah, sure. Maybe not necessarily though, because again, if you're locking in right now at 5%, for 30 years, that's not going to make, that's not going to change anything. So it would help those over the last couple of years that have locked in at super low rates. Sure. But this has been a longer issue. It's a bigger yeah. issue than just, just interest rates. This is a lack of units, right? Um, what we need. So someone else says what we need is small wartime houses built that people will be able to afford. Not uh, too many people can afford the new houses like what they're building in Essex. Mm-hmm. So, a hundred percent listener. I love that comment. Now, something to keep in mind though, is, um, the issue that developers are having right now, builders are having right now, because I've, I've been a builder. I understand. Um, lot costs, land costs have skyrocketed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, not long ago, you could buy a lot in subdivision for $30,000. Now you're a quarter million dollars for a lot. And then you're 40, 50, 60 yep. plus thousand for dollars development for fees. development fees. So you're $300,000 before you even get into the house, before you even put a house up on the, on the property. So, um, and that's regardless of what size it is. That's just literally for the lot. I guess you could build smaller lots, um, but it it wouldn't, you know, have that much of an effect. Uh, Labor costs in construction have skyrocketed. Materials. Material costs have skyrocketed. Um, And so a lot of those, you know, it's it's a bigger issue than just, but 100%, building smaller properties, Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the wartime homes we often see in Windsor Essex County, going back to that model would definitely be great. But it won't relieve as much as people think because land costs are still expensive. Uh, and why are they expensive? Well, because developers are spending millions and millions of dollars in time, first of all, because it takes years for these things to get approved. Uh, and they're borrowing that money to do that work. So if we can, again, cut some red tape, <laughs> that would help yeah. 100%. Um, but... Some funny comments coming in, but I, I don't oh. know. Sure, I, I, I can't. So, I, if you're listening, and yes, I got your comment. Very funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, ultimately, we need more units. But what do we do? Well, I mean, there's some great ideas, and they're all they're all solution. There, there's all kinds of great solutions there. It's just a matter of I think we really need some um, the government to focus on different different things. Yes. Better, you know, making it more affordable, making yes. for, for the build, for the developer. Yes. That is, that's a, that's a key. Yeah. The, the, the funny comment from the listener, I, I'm just going to clean it up a little bit, but basically just saying we'd have more babies, <laughs> more babies. Come on. We need to grow the economy. We need to have more, more babies. Well, I think, I think so. what I don't quote me, uh, but I think it was the average is like 1.18. Yes. Um, which is, well, first of all, you know, it's just, we, we both have kids. It's expensive to yeah. have kids these days. Yeah. It's not cheap. My kids don't at this juncture and they're in their mid twenties. Yes. They're like, I don't want kids. Yeah. They don't, they just don't want them. It makes me sad. But anyway, that's a story for another point. day. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they'll change their <laughs> minds. But ultimately, which goes back to our, our discussion on immigration. If we don't have immigration coming in, then our economy would be in very bad shape. Yep. So maybe it's a, but it's true though. Think about this. How often do we hear of, you know, doctors coming in, immigrating in and they, they're, they're, doing something that's, you know, part-time work somewhere because they can't get licensed mm. properly in the province mm-hmm. or in the country to, you know, to keep working as a doctor or as a whatever professional they are. So, 
um, yeah, it's, it's a big, it's a big issue. Uh, it's not a simple fix, unfortunately. And what what I just you, you can tell we're you know not necessarily in election season, but the parties are trying to you know please everybody please everyone. in some way, shape, that's or form. Right. Yeah, that's right. But it's not an easy fix. We need more units, and uh, that is the only way to fix the issue. You there's too much demand. And there's not enough units. So I agree with our listeners that are chiming in saying build larger buildings. Agreed. We need more apartment buildings, more condo buildings, you know, because again, those generally uh, retirees would oftentimes yes. downsize yep. and open up that housing for first time buyers. Yep, exactly. But now they're not moving. They're saying, you know what? No, because where am I going to go? So I'm going to stay put in this house. You know, I'm not going to open it up for new, new buyers. I'm going to just stay put and I'm going to soak up that inventory uh, and not go to a like a retirement home or a smaller place or an mm-hmm. apartment, because it's just so expensive that I might as well just stay in my house that's already paid for. And you know, often you know, oftentimes, um, yeah, it's interesting. Indeed. What do you do? Um, we still have a couple minutes, so I'm going to get back to the RBC article. Um, speed up housing project approvals. So uh, there was a, there was seven ideas on how to help this crisis, right? So speed up housing. Project approvals, which again, a great idea by reducing re- regulatory requirements, harmonizing building codes and prioritizing projects with faster turnaround times, 100%. Easing uh, zoning restrictions, so to allow for more density in cities and diversify the types of houses built to make more productive use of land. We talked about this, mm-hmm. right? Great idea. Uh, lower the cost of building new housing by using more cost efficient materials and uh, modulating government charges. So an example, right? Uh, in construction, over the years, as labor has gotten tighter, companies are innovating, right? And maybe, so something that's very difficult to find these days is a good mason, right? Great masons, uh, they're aging out. New mm-hmm. uh, workers coming into the workforce are not laying brick. They're just not no. doing it. So oftentimes you'll have product that are made to look like real brick, um, but they're, you know, basically they're sheets you stick on the wall, you know, to kind of give that, that appearance. Um, but you don't need a Mason necessarily. You can have a tile worker install them. So that kind of thing, that kind of innovation that you don't require as much, you know, prefab homes, mm-hmm. you know, then you can basically just have a crew on site that can just stick them together, uh, which would help. Right. But, uh, a listener just texted in retirement homes are too expensive for many seniors. Uh, up to $84,000 a year to stay in one. Oh yeah. my goodness. Crazy. Like, wow. That is that is nuts. Yes. You know, uh, no doubt. It's You have to basically save up and have your investments in place uh, and sell your property. And, uh, you know, hopefully you have enough money by the end of the uh, end of your life to, <laughs> right? keep, to keep paying for it. I, you know? All the thoughts in my head, I just have to keep them there right now. Yeah. <laughs> But it's uh, it's interesting. Uh, and then last but not least, there's a couple more. Change the housing supply mix with incentives to build purpose-built apartment buildings by waiving development charges and using publicly owned land. Love the idea. Because mm-hmm. again, land is expensive. Yep. So there. The governments want to do something? Perfect. Step up and give some land to uh, some, some housing projects. Sure. Right? Yeah. And uh, expand the housing stock from within by reclaiming units from short-term rental businesses making it easier to build secondary suites and convert non-residential buildings. So maybe, again, in New York and in uh, Toronto, the GTA, a lot of office buildings are no longer being used for offices. Then perfect. Turn them into residential buildings. That could be, you know, uh, a quicker turnaround time on some new units coming into the marketplace. So there you go. Okay, we're going to come back. Uh, We're going to give away the last pair of tickets to our sold-out charity event, Country at Heart, being held on April 27th in two Saturdays from now at the LaSalle Event Center. If you want a chance to win, uh, you can text the keyword HEART, H-E-A-R-T, HEART, to 10-800. We'll give away the pair of tickets in uh, after the break here. We'll talk to Chris Gibb from Gibb Insurance Brokers as well. Lots more to come right here on the Dan Jamis Real Estate Show.